Hi, and welcome to Coding TensorFlow, a show where we focus on coding machine learning and AI. I'm Lawrence Moroni, a developer advocate for TensorFlow. And in this episode, we're going to look at using JavaScript for machine learning in the browser. This is achieved using TensorFlow.js, a JavaScript library for training and deploying machine learned models in the browser and on Node.js. There's lots of great information about it on the js.tensorflow.org site, including samples, API docs, and frequently asked questions. In this first episode, I'll show you how easy it is to build and train a very simple model that executes entirely in the browser. And in the next episodes, we'll look at setting up a node environment and running more complex examples. Are you ready to go? OK, let's do this. Let's first create the simplest web page imaginable. It's empty, but for one div. And we'll even leave that empty, too. The next thing, of course, is to add the TensorFlow.js libraries. And these can be inserted using a script tag. And I do that here. Always be sure to use the latest version, which you can find at this URL. Be sure to put the script loader in your head tag, as shown here. Great. You now have your page set up for TensorFlow. So let's now show a simple but powerful example of how it can work. The goal of machine learning is to train a model from input data. This model can be then used to infer or predict output data for future input values. So for example, take a look at this data. Now, it's pretty obvious to the human eye that there's a linear relationship in this data. These dots can be joined by a straight line. Thus, even though I don't know what the y value is when x is 5, I can infer that by looking at the line. In machine learning, we do this by training a model on the input data. So let's take a look at the code for this. First of all, I'm going to create a new script block. And within that, I'll create an asynchronous function called learn linear. It's asynchronous because the learning will take some time. So it's good to get into the habit of waiting for the learning to finish. Now I'm going to add a model. I'm using a tf.sequential where the outputs of one layer are the inputs to the next. It's a simple stack of layers with no branching or any kind of skipping. I will then add a dense layer to this. And dense means all of the nodes in each of the layers are connected to each other. In this case, it's a little redundant as I only have one layer and one node, but it's the easiest way to define a simple neural network like this. Now that my model is defined, it's time to compile it. To do this, I have to specify some parameters, including the loss function and the optimizer. I'm setting the loss function to be a mean squared error. It's a pretty standard one, particularly for linear equations. And the optimizer is going to be set to SGD, which stands for stochastic gradient descent. This simply defines a methodology for the learning. There are a bunch of them supported, including SGD and the popular Adam. You can learn more about these in the Training Optimizer section of the API, and we'll put a link below. For the next step, I'll define my x and y values for the line. Remember that graph we showed earlier? Let's take a look at the points on that. You can see that I've labeled them here with their x and y coordinates. From a machine learning perspective, we can consider the x values to be our inputs and our y values to be our desired outputs. Thus, in the future, if we feed in a new x value, we'd get a y value back. So to train a model to do this, we can create two tensors for the training values, one for the x's and one for the y's. Let's take a look at this in code. I'll create a tensor for the x's by using tf.tensor2d. You'll see that the first element in this is my array of x values, minus 1, 0, 1, etc. The second parameter is the shape of this array, six rows and one column. I'll then do the same for my y's, giving my y values and the same shape, six rows and one column. Now all I have to do is train my model. Now this can take some time for complex models, but because this is really simple, it's going to be really quick. Either way, because it takes an indeterminate time, you will await its execution, which is why you made this function an asynchronous one to begin with. So let's take a look at the code. To train a model for a fixed number of iterations, known as epochs, you call the fit method. Here you can see I'm telling it my input values, the x's, 
my output values, the Ys, and then asking it to train for 250 iterations. Once the model is trained, I can try to do a prediction from it. So if you're good at math, you'll see that the relationship here between x and y is y equals 2x minus 1. Thus, the value for x is 5, where then y should be 9. You use the model.predict method to get a prediction. So let's see that in action. I'll refer to the div called output field that I created earlier, and I'll load the results of the prediction into its inner text. To do this, I call model.predict, and I pass my input tensor, which is a single value in a one-by-one one array. TensorFlow will then give me back the value, and you'll see that it predicted 38.5, which is pretty close to the correct value of 39. If I refresh, the value changes to 38.3 because I've retrained the neural network. I can impact the accuracy by training for more epochs, giving the network more time to error correct. So let's make it, say, 500 epochs. And now, when I refresh, we'll see my value is 38.9, and another refresh keeps it there. So let's see what it would predict for x equals 10. It gives us 18.97, where, of course, the correct value is 19. I'll refresh and retrain the network, and now I get 18.98. We're pretty close. And that's it. You've just created a neural network using JavaScript in the browser and trained it to predict a linear relationship. This was made possible by TensorFlow.js. In the next episode of this series, you'll learn a little about data science. And this is the process of preparing data for machine learning. And you'll do it by building a simple classifier for TensorFlow, which runs completely in the browser. You can learn more about TensorFlow.js on TensorFlow.org. And don't forget to hit that Subscribe button for more great videos on this channel. Thank you.